the middle class is dead or in the process of dying. My name is Darius. And I'm Carmen. Go ahead and pull up a chair because this is a much needed conversation that we need to have in order for you to understand the financial processes that are in place and how to position yourself for success by being at the top of the totem pole. Mm -hmm. Now, when we talk about a totem pole, that is basically saying that there is different positions that you can be. You can be at the top, you can be at the middle, or you can be at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Now, for those of us that are at the top of the totem pole, Basically, we get to benefit from everything that everybody else is doing below us, mm -hmm. right? And those who are at the bottom halves of the totem pole are supporting the top half. Mm -hmm. So when we think about this, it, it's if we just generalize this whole concept, we're thinking about the haves and the have-nots. Mm -hmm. And really what we want you to understand is, like Derry said, if you think about the top of the totem pole, as far as our financial systems are in place, who are those individuals? Mm -hmm. Just take a moment and think about it. What do you, how would you answer that question? And I would simply answer that question, the rich. And, and what do the rich mean? That could be banks and corporations. That could be uh, individual people, um, you know, wh whomever you think benefits the most um, as far as the systems that they've set up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and systems is huge. I hope that's one thing you get from this video is the fact that the people on top have systems in place. Mm -hmm. And when we think about systems, they have assets in place where the consumers buy these assets and their money is transferred to the people that have the assets. Yeah. So we have two positions, uh, liabilities and assets. Mm -hmm. A liability to one person is an asset to somebody else because when you purchase that liability, mm -hmm. your money is being transferred to somebody else. Mm -hmm. So the, for those of us that are able to consume a lot of assets, mm -hmm. we have a lot of income coming uh, coming to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if we, we just think about it, everyone knows Amazon, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just talk about Amazon for a moment. If we're talking about the corporation and or the individual, Jeff Bezos, he's at the top of the, the totem pole mm -hmm. when you think about it. And what is he? what has he done? He, he what has he done? I don't know why it sounded funny. So what Jeff has done is he's created a system or a business around providing products to consumers. Which are assets. Which all of those products that you see on Amazon.com when you scroll up and down are assets to him. Mm -hmm. What are they uh, to us as consumers? They are liabilities because they take money out of our pocket. And we talk about this all the time on the Wealth Nation channel, the difference between assets and liabilities. Assets put money in your pocket, liabilities take money out. And unfortunately, when we think of the the totem pole, when we think the top of the totem pole, we think about the rich, then we think about the middle class is next, and then we think about the, the lower middle class, for example. The, the middle class and the lower middle class are supporting the rich because they're buying all of the the, the products that they're consumers if you think about it it's because they can afford to consume mm -hmm. they go and they they work and the, the thing is when you have a job you're taxed at the highest the highest tax tax point mm -hmm. the people that own the assets they are able to get tax breaks because a that's what the ownership. system yeah business owners that's what the system allows them to do mm -hmm. it's not the fact that they're doing anything wrong is that this is how the game is played and they know how to play the game mm -hmm. so the best thing for us to do is understand how to play the game better than we're currently playing it and right now what's happening in this game is the middle class is doing all the work because they are the ones that are working the jobs they're the one that is paying the most in taxes they're the ones that are consuming mm -hmm. making the rich richer mm -hmm. and the poor who maybe don't have the income to support their habits mm -hmm. are getting subsidies from the, the government the middle class because they're paying the taxes to help <laughs> subsidize them exactly so what's happening what we're seeing is that the middle class is just being overworked hmm. overworked to the point to where they're starting to creep into the lower middle class and then the um i i, I guess e even lower than that hmm. so what happens is we're starting to see what we hear all the time on the news and what we read uh, online is that they're the tax, not the tax, the uh, wealth gap is getting bigger. Yeah. And as that wealth gap gets bigger, you see more and more people from the middle class either go uh, down to the, the poor or lower middle class, mm -hmm. or they figure out their finances, they figure out the game and they move up. 
to the um, upper class. And and to, to your point that the when the wealth gap gets larger and larger, if you are considered upper middle class, the, the gap is just so far that it's hard for you to get to the rich because of the wealth gap. Mm -hmm. So just going back to make sure that we're on the same page and we summarize again, there's the rich, there's the middle class, and then, then there's the, 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 lo the lower middle class, let's say at this point. Um, so what happens really is in the interest of the middle class where we're the ones uh, working, we're the ones paying all the taxes, you know, what happens to those tax dollars? You know, we always think they're going for the schools or the streets or, you know, helping this. And, and don't get me wrong that they, they do at some point, but there are also uh, assistance that we as middle class um, are able to provide to other classes. Mm -hmm. And those uh, programs and assistance help the lower middle class then be able to afford to be consumers because it gives them the breaks that they need to be able to buy the products and services that they need. So as a middle class uh, person or consumer, let's yeah. just call it a middle class consumers. consumers. So as, as the consumers continue to work, 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 they're, they're sending money up and sending money down, uh, because they're continuing to make the rich, rich and, and not progressing as a class, so to speak. So again, the things that we talk about all the time on the wealth nation channel is we're not mad at Jeff Bezos. We're not mad at Amazon. We're just like, let's look at exactly what they're doing and take a note from our for our own book and start to create our own systems so that we can start to level up our finances. We can start to become independent and we're not so dependent on those uh, around us. And it comes to our financial education, our financial literacy. Mm -hmm. What's happening is that we're, we mismanage our, our funds mm -hmm. or not mismanage our funds, but buy things that don't necessarily put money into our pocket. And ignorance. Yeah. Yeah, like the latest iPhone. Mm -hmm. That's not making our lives any better. What mm -hmm. it's doing is it's making Apple richer. Richer. <laughs> when we talk about buying the the latest the latest gear, the name brand gear, mm -hmm. it's not making our life better. What mm -hmm. it's doing is it's making the rich richer. richer. Mm -hmm. And it can be a, a variety of different things that we can call out, but what's happening is the middle class is putting their money into liabilities mm -hmm. instead of putting their money into assets, which go back to financial literacy, literacy in the way this game is being played. Mm -hmm. You play this game by stacking up your assets. Yes. And that's something that we aren't doing because mm -hmm. we want to look like we have money instead of actually having money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, the simplistic way of, of forming that, and you were just kind of talking to this, is the rich own assets. Yeah. Because let's and think about everyone else buys things are our consumers or really that's what it is and there's so many times where people come to us and are like carmen what should we invest in what should we do blah blah, blah. and we're always like own whatever it is that hence why we always say own your own lifestyle it's mm -hmm. all about ownership in order for you to start taking advantage of or advantage and ownership of your financial lifestyle you have to start owning assets that are going to put money back in your pocket right and the, the let's say the four big things biggest things that are holding us back is student loan debt personal okay. loans credit cards and our mortgage mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. where the majority of our money is going and that's where mm -hmm. debt uh, resides so let's think about uh student loans who owns the student loan debt government the, the government and the in the banks who owns our personal loans credit cards mm -hmm. the the banks mm -hmm. and what we what we do is not only do we finance these things through these third party companies mm -hmm. but we immediately transition uh money that we don't own we we go in debt for transition money that we don't own to somebody else and then we start making payments which mm -hmm. are interest payments on the liabilities and then on top of that the money that we use to pay these these debts we are also taxed on <laughs> so we we think we get it every way we can yeah, we, we we're getting it in in <clears throat> every direction mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now uh we're giving it up in every direction <laughs> yeah <laughs> depending on how what, what you're thinking about so um what i was thinking was, was student loans um and and you have to think about the, the marketing behind these student loans mortgages whatever it is we just did a video the other day about mortgages and and uh the, the comments weren't so great but again you guys have to understand what it is that we're trying to say we understand houses appreciate but it takes time for a house to appreciate and mm -hmm. once a house appreciates what are you going to do with the equity you can't just spend equity mm -hmm. um and especially these days, it's getting harder and harder to touch the equity in your house. Right. So what we're what we want you to do, hold on, that I'm gonna come back to that point. But going back to the student loans, 
And you need to look at this the same way as you think about your mortgages. With the student loans, the marketing behind it is get get your education, mm-hmm. right? Pay, pay all this money, get your education so that you can get a better paying job. What has happened these days? Um, students are graduating and they're not even finding jobs in the fields that they're studying. And they're not even getting the higher paying jobs to be able to afford to pay off the student loans. Yeah. And what happens is millennials these days, you know, they're not able to buy houses. They're not able to uh, buy assets and things that they uh, choose to because they have these student loans that are hooked to their their ankle. Right. And on top of that, not only do we have to uh, go to college to get a good paying job, but we go to college and we learn how to become an employee, which yes, is part of the system, part of the system you work where for you're, somebody else. Yeah. And you don't get any tax breaks or have any tax loopholes as an employee all the loopholes go to the employer Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you are have become an asset to that employer because you he can write off his employees Mm -hmm. um for for tax breaks but you don't necessarily have anything to write off exactly and student loans if you think about who owns the debt he who owns the debt what what is the quote that you say he who owns, owns the debt makes the rules or something like no, that? no no a uh, one man's debt is another man's cash oh yeah that, that's what you say love that famous quote by Darius you heard <laughs> it here today when you think about who owns all of the student loan debt I think it what is it 17 trillion the last time that we say we'll put the number up here on the screen so that you can see but who owns that that's cash flow Mm -hmm. for the banks and the governments that's coming every single day to all of those who wanted that better education right again don't misunderstand us we're not saying to not go get your education but we're saying to understand the system Mm -hmm. (laughs) understand how this thing is played next moving on to your homes dun 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 Mm -hmm. all right right. in the comments just listen just listen for a moment so let's let let me let me set the stage first go ahead before we jump into it it. right now we are seeing the the lowest inches rates that we've seen in a very long time but yeah. we also see where the uh, home prices have increased significantly. Yeah, people are going crazy and, out there. Yeah, we're going crazy over higher uh, house prices. The bidding wars. Uh, higher, higher house prices, but lowest interest rates. Mm-hmm. Lower, the lowest interest rates we, we've seen. Mm-hmm. So is there really uh, a benefit to buying a, a house that is significantly over price at a lower interest rate and i'm just setting the stage i'm not saying that the house doesn't appreciate over time but i'm just what i'm saying is that it well it's you left it as a question that's for you to answer (laughs) (laughs) that's really what it is that's for you to answer um and at the end of the day it's never in your best benefit to buy something that's overpriced and then tack on interest to it right the thing just think about it would you buy a pair of jordans those of you who aren't sneakerheads, <laughs> would you buy a pair of Jordans for $500 when you know they're worth 250 and then have interest on top of that? Uh, well, sneakerheads, we're not talking to you because hopefully you use those as an, as assets <laughs> to, to then, um, uh, sell later at a higher price. Right. But just, I was trying to give you an example of something from a simplistic standpoint. We need to apply that same methodologies to everything that we buy, regardless if we think that it's going to appreciate whatever it is. Right. So when we think about houses, you know, everyone's argument is, oh yes, I'm going to buy a house because I'm, it's going to appreciate. I'm going to get equity in our, in my home. But Think about how many years that it takes to build equity. Can you take that same amount of time and maybe do build a business, make millions of dollars and and not be capped at whatever your, your, your growth earning potential could be in that same amount of time? Everything's possible these days. Yeah, you don't even have to uh, start a business just to make millions of dollars because 90% of the people that start a business don't Mm -hmm. even get to the million dollar threshold. What you want to do is use that business as an asset so that you can uh, use that opportunity or use those uh, those tax advantages of having a business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we just want you to think about things in a different way. And the whole reason why we talk about home ownership is what is an asset? What is a liability when you have a mortgage? that is a liability to the consumer and it's an asset to the bank. So knowing the system, which situation, which which position would you rather be in? So you need to start thinking about how you can set yourself up to either own a house outright and or figure out how to flip ways where maybe you have a mortgage but somebody else is paying it for you so that you, that money isn't coming out of your pocket. So it's mm-hmm. just understanding the system, how it's played, and making sure that you are paying out as little as possible as the consumer. Right, now we spend a lot of time talking about rich people and we talk, spend a lot of time talking about the middle class. What about the uh, the poor? Mm-hmm. The poor, uh, they don't necessarily have the, the means. So when it comes to the uh, tax programs, um, that's being paid by the middle consumers, class. which mm-hmm. are the middle class. Mm-hmm. So they're able to take advantage 
or not even take advantage well yeah i would say some are able to take advantage um of the situation um and what i would say people do is we continue to look at social media and we continue to look at um television and see the lifestyle that we want mm -hmm. and what we do is we do everything to look like we have that lifestyle mm -hmm. so that we can feel better of our, about ourselves mm -hmm. temporarily mm -hmm. but we don't solve the root cause of the problem the root cause of our problem is that we don't understand how the game is being played mm -hmm. we don't understand the financial system and what things that we need to to make or sacrifices we need to make to the liabilities so that we can save up to buy an asset to put money in our pockets. It's true. And with even if we think about name brand things, it can be something as simple as that when you the point that you're making about how sometimes we spend too much money to look like we have money. It, that's a whole system as well. When you mm -hmm. think about name brand things, whenever you're buying those those goods, those products, services, whatever it is, where is that money going to the top? And it's not coming back to you. Right. And, and unfortunately, now you have a larger gap in your wallet because you spent all that money to look like you had money as opposed to using that money to create assets. And that's why the poor are going to continue to do the same cycle until they understand how money is played. That's why the middle class is going to continue to be a part of the same cycle because the, the wealth gap is getting larger and larger. And we know with inflation, um, you know, inflation and taxes, mm -hmm. that is going to significantly, significantly affect the amount of money that you have in in your hands and right. when we think about the largest eroder of money is taxes and unfortunately as the middle class and as the poor you're always going to pay the most in taxes because you don't have assets to be able to write off right i couldn't have said it better i i, I was feeling i'm feeling myself on that one good do you want to continue <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh what else what else do we want to say so speaking of assets we did a video where we talked about four asset classes oh good one um, yeah um and just to transition a little bit into asset classes, assets put money in your pocket, liabilities take money out of. And what did you, did you hear us? I know we said it multiple times. Assets put money in your pocket, liabilities take money out. Because some of you guys are going to watch this video and go, oh, okay, that makes sense. And then you're going to go buy something <laughs> that doesn't put any money back in your pocket. Right. And for things that don't put money into our pocket, yes, we still need clothes. But do we need Gucci? We need clothes, but do we need to need to buy Nike? It's a good question. Very good question. Do we need to buy Jordans? Very good question. That's that, that's for you all to answer. Well, Michael Jordan is a billionaire. Mm -hmm. The people that buy his his stuff are not. Aren't, are not. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I say that's for you to answer because many of you out there can legitimately afford it. And so that might make sense for you to buy something that's of name brand. But for those of you who... Aff affording is just justification for you Ooh. to... Uh, buy something that still doesn't put money in your pocket just because you can afford some doesn't that's, necessarily mean you should buy it if you dope. can afford something you should buy an asset instead so that asset can buy it for you what he said yeah i agree good <laughs> <laughs> as i was saying it i was like actually does that make sense and then you just took it over so thank you for that yeah you can afford a lot of things it's but still justificate Ooh, that's powerful it's justification Ooh, it is because at the end of the day, the people that can afford things are still consumers. Yes, it yes. still doesn't solve the root cause of yeah. the problem that we have, mm -hmm. which is the middle class is dying. Mm -hmm. And if the middle class doesn't exist, then we got a problem. <laughs> yeah. Houston, we got a problem. <laughs> For real, we got a big problem. Because how will the rich continue to get rich if the middle class isn't there working to support, support the rich? The rich. Mm -hmm. And how will the poor continue to survive if they don't have the middle class supporting them that's another video to create hmm. something to think about <laughs> but when we talk about assets that's a doozy uh, uh we talk about fixed assets fixed assets are basically mailbox money so every time you pay your credit card what you're doing is you're a fixed asset for whoever you are um uh, paying your monthly minimum payment to mm -hmm. because you're paying that monthly minimal payment principal and interest what people are after when um or not people what businesses are after isn't necessarily the money that they lent you they what they're after is the interest that they earn from giving you that money so mm -hmm. that's a fixed asset that you are able to provide or be for somebody else yeah yeah and the other thing to note too is if you want to join the wealth nation definitely click on the link below we are all about teaching you about financial freedom and how you can own your own lifestyle and in fact we do this through a whole life insurance we 
We mm-hmm. use overfunded cash, uh, overfunded life insurance that has cash value to allow you to finance your own lifestyle. And the point of this is again, arming you with the tools that you need so that you can finance your own lifestyle, keep the money, keep the interest and do it again and again and again, rinse and repeat and use those funds to invest so that you can continue to put money back in your pocket. Right. And the name of the game is to follow the interest. And if you can finance your own lifestyle, your own major purchases, you're able to redirect that interest back to yourself so that you can it can be reused to uh, funnel into another asset. Yes. The reason why wealthy people continue to be wealthy is because they continue to buy assets. Yes. Yeah. We continue to buy liabilities. That's why we're sinking further and further down mm-hmm. as a middle class, <laughs> as, a middle, as a class. So do you, did you want to continue with the assets? So we have um, the cash asset, mm-hmm. which is our savings account. It's an asset. Um, uh, and another thing that falls into that cash asset would be a life insurance policy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, the reason why we like life insurance is because of everything that Carmen said, the next asset uh, class would be like your stock market. Mm-hmm. Um, being able to buy uh, uh, something that provides you dividends. Mm. That's another asset class. Another asset class is the one that I talk about, which is the fixed asset. Mm-hmm. Um, you're able to be provided with uh, money on a on a, a consistent basis. Your car note is an, a fixed asset for the bank. Um, the bank. Your credit card is a fixed asset <laughs> to the bank. <laughs> and then we go into real estate. Real estate is another asset, but it's one of those ones that um, I, I think is for us a little controversial because we say that a house is a liability if you don't own it because you're making payments to it, um, principal and interest. That's a liability because it's taking money out of your pocket. And yes, it may you may have some equity in that, but you can't spend equity. Right? Yeah, yeah, like we were saying earlier. The real estate that we're talking about is the real estate in which you have uh, what you own and you have renters in that and they're putting money into your pocket. That is the asset of real estate that we're talking about. When you have a, um, a, a multifamily home or mm-hmm. you have a commercial property or mm-hmm. you have um, some type of uh, apartment complex. You're though, making money You're from making it. money from it. Those are the assets that, that we refer to when we're talking about real estate. Yeah. And then another asset class is commodities, uh, gold, silver, uh, wheat, yeah. cotton. Those are commodities that, um, that would take the place of of cash. So what happens as uh, the value of money continues to go down, which means that inflation continues to go up, these commodities maintain their value. Gold, there's a fixed amount of gold. So the value of gold is going to go up as um, the value of cash goes down. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and the other thing too is just making sure that you understand these things the mm-hmm. asset classes everything that Darius just mentioned where are you placing your money because again as as middle class or even the poor you tend to not have assets or you may just have one and not understand that you need to diversify and protect your assets by by getting involved in multiple ones and not mm-hmm. just one asset so when something goes down your other ones appreciate or whatever the case may be so going back to the the point of understanding that the middle class is dying what are you going to do about it you heard this video you heard everything that we talked about today so what are you going to do about it when you wake up tomorrow are you going to make sure that you have a strategy in place to make sure that your money is working for you Mm -hmm. are you going to continue to be a consumer and spend money without it bringing any money back yeah acting like it doesn't exist doesn't solve solve anything it doesn't Mm -hmm. solve your problem you still have a problem even if it's under the, under the rug. Yeah. So we need to face our problems uh, head on mm-hmm. because eventually it's going to rear its ugly head, ugly head at the most inconvenient time. Mhm. And it's just it's one of those things that we want to make sure we continue to educate the public about so that you don't run into these things that we talk about. So start arming yourself, start educating yourself and figuring out what you can do to put yourself closer to the top of the totem pole and what are the assets or the things that you need to start creating that are going to put money back in your pocket right and speaking of assets check out our next video where we give you four different assets that you need to own for life and don't forget to own your own lifestyle or someone else will